Liam's birth. So we did everything we were told to do from the doctors, the books, the instructors. We went to classes, did all of those things. And what we found out was at the end of the day, when it comes to most things, but specifically to labor, birth, having a baby, you need to have an extensive plan, ask all the questions, know exactly what you want to do in any given situation. And then on the day of, well, when the moment comes, when things start to, to move forward towards the end, take that plan and throw it out the fucking window. Because nothing is going to go the way that you expected it. Before I go any further, I want to do the call to action section. It's the least favorite part of doing these, but apparently if you don't ask, then less people do those things. You can see that when Twitch streamers ask for Twitch Primes, all of a sudden they ask for it and they just start getting blown up with them. So I don't like it, but if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe, toss in a like, and throw in a comment. Apparently it really helps with the algorithm. Also, give me some feedback. Let me know what you'd like to see differently. Tell me what you want me to stop doing. I'm I'm open to all kinds of feedback and I am trying to get better at doing these things. Obviously video editing has been suffering and it's something I'm trying to work on. So please give me as much feedback as you feel is adequate for um, me to improve. Either way, I just appreciate you being here and I'm hoping that you're learning something. If you are feeling extra supportive, check out the Patreon. Uh, there's not a lot of extra perks there, but it's some fun, short little things that I'm trying to do for people who've added to my Patreon account, and I really appreciate them as well. Enjoy. So I wanted to tell this story because it was one of those really interesting kind of, I mean, every birth is a miracle, right? It's fantastic. Kids are great. They are stressful. They are money pits they sap your energy but i would never change any part of what has happened then up to now and i can't imagine that changing liam's birth was interesting because we had the right so the go through you find out that you're pregnant and they ask questions like do you know when the conception was and they we try to track it and figure out when when those dates were so that they can determine a a due date a potential due date based off of the size of the the baby when they first do the sonogram and check it and you do all those things as well as from the assumed date of, of conception and the birth date for Liam was April 6th. That was the, that was the due date. So randomly in March, we are chilling out. I'm in here. I'm playing something, probably Dota at the time. And Jess is in bed. She's sleeping and she calls me from the other room. I go in there and she's standing up next to the bed and is like, I need to go to the hospital. I'm like, okay, what, like what's going on type of thing. And she's kind of explaining just something feels weird and it feels like contractions. And you know, we know about Braxton Hicks. They talk about those things all the time in the books, in the classes, in the videos, whatever it is that we kind of consumed up to that point. And so I'm like, okay, are we sure? I mean, and I, and my job is to do the double check. Are we sure? Do Take a second. You want to confirm? And she's like, yeah, absolutely. This feels weird. So, okay, cool. We get our stuff. We have our go bag. We get in the car and we drive up to the hospital. And I kind of joke around in the, in the story that I wrote 
that the uh, nurses were obstinate to it. I wouldn't say that's necessarily true. That was trying to kind of convey a little bit of conflict in it. So in all reality, the nurses were fantastic. The first nurse, however, who hooked Jess up to the kind of machines, they strap it across her belly, kind of sitting there. And you see the uh, sports, the soccer players specifically that have kind of the, if you look at the back of their jersey, you can see like this orb there. It's like a disc. And it's tracking them and doing all sorts of things. Like that's what it looked like. Well, like this disc that was just like on her. And they're setting it up and they're moving it. And they keep moving it trying to find, one, the baby's heartbeat, which they could detect. But then contractions were also something they were trying to, to find. And like, okay, clearly the baby's alive. You know, everything's looking good. But we can't sense any contractions. And Jess is sitting there. She's got, uh, no, she didn't have a, she didn't have a, a a mask on at the time but she's sitting there with a little bag and it's like the 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 tube bags it, it literally I described it like a blue, blue sock but she's sitting there and she's like looking at me and like every time the nurse says something she like looks at me like this lady's out of her mind she doesn't know what she's talking about i'm not feeling good and she's she's throwing up in the in the bag and i mentioned that because jess is one of those people who even when she's right we're in our 20s and she gets drunk and she's like i'm gonna have a hangover tomorrow i was like i just go throw it up it's fine just throw up and drink a bunch of water and you get out, out rid of the alcohol maybe it doesn't fix it but it makes it less of a problem and she's like i physically can't and i, I didn't know this but she physically cannot make herself throw up uh finger down the throat none of the stuff um she's never been able to do that so and she's just not a she's not a thrower up right she has to have like the flu to be throwing up and I told the nurse that it was just like, by the way, like she's in pain if she's throwing up. Like this is not, this is not normal. That's not what she does. And the nurse is kind of sitting there and, and and going through the motions and stuff. And she's just like, I can't see anything. So I think it's something else. And they're kind of going back and forth with a couple other nurses about those things. And I mentioned like one of the nurses did tell me like, it's not all that unusual for first time mothers in their third trimester to be like, Oh, I need uh, the baby's coming. You know, help, help me induce it. Um, penalty. And, and it was funny because like, uh, there was for a second, I was like, I, I don't, I don't think Jess would do that. Like she's checked all these boxes up to this point. And yeah, she's been miserable. The third trimester is not fun. I didn't experience it, but I could tell just through being in the, general area like it it was not a fun trimester even with nora it was not a fun trimester and i, thought, I just i don't i don't see just doing it and then i i feel like she would have said something to me too like god can you think i could fake this like she never even cut like thought about it so in the back of my mind i'm like oh, come on guys like let's let's take this a little bit more seriously but again these guys see these nurses see people probably 50 people a day come in there and they're checking on them and doing things. So they probably have a little bit of, you know, I made, I used to make this joke with Jess. I used to make this joke. She was like, Oh, like something is bothering me or whatever. And I'm like, Hey, remember you wanted this baby. So this is everything you wanted. And the joke was funny the first time, but apparently it, it wore thin quickly. But I feel like the nurses kind of have that, like, you wanted this, you're going to deal with this. We're not going to speed it up for you because you're eight, nine months in and want to check this box and get these babies, this baby out of you. So we're kind of going back and forth and they're just like, there's nothing here. We can't detect anything. We're going to send you home. And like the whole way back, Jess is just like leaning back in the seat. And she's like, this is this something it doesn't feel good. And I mentioned, like, I hadn't slept, so I had stayed up most of the night playing because we're a month before the due date. Like, there's not even a thought in my mind that we're about to have a baby. And it's a month before the due date, so I I stayed up late. It's like 2, 3 a.m. I was playing video games. I was a terrible sleeper back then. And we get back home. I get my shoes off. You know, I get into whatever I'm going to sleep into, and I, I'm literally right next to the bed. And she goes, I, we got to go back. We got to go back to the hospital. And I'm, I remember 
being annoyed because I wanted to sleep at my wife who was eight months pregnant and I had no right to be, but I just remember being like, I just want to fucking sleep right now. And again, it's my fault because I was staying up late. I could have gone to sleep and had at least five hours up to that point, at least. maybe more depending on having a healthy sleep schedule. But I just remember being like, are you fucking kidding me? So we go back up there and the nurses were again, very nice. They were very nice. They didn't like roll their eyes or whatever, as, as you would expect, they were very good nurses, but they gave us a delivery room and we're kind of going back and forth. And it was still the same initial nurse from the first time. And she goes, okay, maybe you're just constipated. And I apologize. I'm going to get, pseudo graphic here uh graphic um pseudo graphic i guess whatever that's fine uh with it i'll try not to get gross but it's already kind of gross and so they they want to administer an enema and she tells me she goes you have to be in the, in the bathroom with her and i'm like the what so of course you know it's for safety reasons it's because they don't want her trying to move around half an inch she's have to hold onto a bag that's doing all the stuff that an enema does and whatever so i'm helping out and uh, i'll i'll throw it out there my wife and i are not like super weird about stuff like that like we use the bathroom with the door open all the time we've done it since the beginning it's but we're one of those weird type of couples that just that stuff doesn't gross us out um penalty but they We've never done this, right? So this is a very interesting type of thing. And so I don't have a problem being in the bathroom with my wife during this um, penalty. But I do, I don't know what to do. It's awkward because it's not like we're, I'm having a quick conversation and then leaving the bathroom, which is how that kind of normally goes. Just the door is open or I can walk through the door if the door is closed. We can have a chat and, and go away. Like I don't sit outside the door and talk to her through the door when she's using the bathroom. So I'm in the room with her and I'm just, it's awkward. So I'm cracking jokes. I will get a little bit kind of weird here. So um, penalty. Every time I crack a joke, she squirts a little because <laughs> she can't keep it in. That's what she's supposed to do. And the nurse is getting irritated in the because she could hear us giggling and, and, and whatever. And so but every time she, she, I make her laugh, she then does that and then it makes her laugh more. So it's like, yeah, anyway, so all right, enough of that. But it was kind of, a, I keep talking about the funny moments. Like it just was so awkward. And, and it was this thing where when something started, it just rolled, it just steamrolled into, into giggling and cackling and whatever. So anyway, awkward, super awkward, but really funny and kind of endearing moment because of kind of the situation we were in. And then at hindsight, we go back to it. Like she's been in, in labor this whole time. Uh, if you listen to, if you read the story, if not, then ultimately we find out that this is when Liam is going to be born. So this whole time she actually has been in labor for up to this point. I think it's been almost 12-ish hours that she's been in labor and we are not even considering the fact that she's about to have a baby. So we do this. She's still sitting going, no, I still, this didn't fix anything. I still don't feel right I'm feeling these pains and I'm feeling that. So they give her a room. They kind of, it feels like an appeasement moment. And they give her a room and they, and they toss her in uh, for observation penalty. I said, ah, and so things kind of like, I don't know, in a sense, kind of slow down. Jess's mom was visiting Jess's brother in California, I believe at the time. And she had flown back. Like Jess was like, I'm in the hospital with blah 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 everything's fine but something's off and Jess's mom flew back even before she knew for a fact that we were um penalty moving in the the baby is going to be born direction when Jess's mom kind of gets there we set everything up and they're like just you can go home and sleep now like it's I'm running on 12 hours of sleep or sorry I'm running on no sleep at this point and I'm like, sweet, cool, no problem. I drive back home. And I mentioned this, but I actually drove into the back of the garage because I was I was so tired. And again, my I, it's my fault. It, I was not a good sleeper. I only recently started figuring out that sleep is um, penalty, something that I need to focus on and, and fix at the end of the day. 
So I go home, I run in the back of the garage. I don't even tell Jess about running in the back of the garage. Just like I don't know, have that conversation after, after we get back home. I go in, I shower, I sleep and I get a couple hours of sleep. It was nice, but I started getting texts and Jess was needing help move around, moving around the hospital room, the delivery room. And Jess's mom was just not able to do that. So she's like, I need you to, to come back and, and help out. Um, Jess has one of the smallest bladders. I said, um, that's a penalty. I heard it. Has one of the smallest bladders and she pees what feels like every 10 minutes. She's constantly in the bathroom with her tiny little golf ball bladder. And so with the baby inside, she's pushing, you know, he's pushing up against her bladder and she's probably peeing even, even more often than that. They now have an IV in her, I believe, if I remember correctly. Maybe not, maybe not at this point, but something was causing her to, to, to pee more and pee more and more and more. And her mom can't get her out of the bed and can't move her to the bathroom and get her in, back into the, into the bed uh, as easily as I could. So she asked me to come back up and, and ultimately that's why I wasn't able to get even more sleep, but we were not in baby's coming mode at that point. So I bring all that up to say we were, it was sometime on Saturday, after all this stuff happened Thursday night, Friday kind of was just like, we were just in the room and she just never felt like things were getting better. And sometime on Saturday, she's walking you know, to the bathroom again and she goes, hey, can you get the nurse? Like, I feel like I'm, I'm leaking. I, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm peeing myself or something else. Like that's, that's where that kind of went. And the nurse comes in and they do a test and like, oh no, that's that's amniotic fluid. But it's coming very, very weakly. It's very, it's a very weak leak. And I remember when we were in the classes and things, they talked about when the water breaks and they talked about a top break. And I remember that very specifically because I was like, that would be like such a weird kind of scenario to just be like the liquids leaving slowly. But apparently it fills back up, so it's not one of those things where the baby's in danger of running out of amniotic fluid or whatever, because it's kind of you know producing it and and whatnot. So so things just start to like speed up. Things just start to speed up. They're just like, okay, well then I guess the baby is coming because that's this, the first sign of like the next steps, and we. She gets started hooked up to all these machines and the nurses are starting to scramble. And it's like that scene in Fifth Element where uh, Gary Oldman pushes the plate off the off the desk or whatever, or pushes the cup off the desk and it breaks. And then all the little machines come out and start cleaning up. He's like, oh, chaos. Look at that. It's action or whatever it is, he says. That's how it kind of felt. It was like the moment that was happening. It's like all the nurses were like, oh, this is actually happening now. And we did have one of the nurses from Friday who came in on Saturday and was like, you're still here and you're having your baby. I am very surprised. So I kind of made some jokes in the writing about how the nurses were betting on how long Jess would be in there. Obviously they didn't, but well, they didn't in front of me. So that's entirely speculative, but it was really, it was really an interesting kind of turn of events because nobody, absolutely nobody in that building believed that Jess was about to have a baby one month early and then so it's leaking they're like okay well let's you know let's move some things along i'm sure that there was more scientific things behind that that i just don't remember the conversation but they go and they 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 break the water for her they they do it for her and i remember the nurse like had to step back and go oh <laughs> and she was just like surprised at kind of the whoosh that happened and and yeah, they sort of just start cleaning it up. It's like, I guess that's what they do. It's just it's never occurred to me. Like, I guess that makes sense, but it never occurred to me. It's just like, let it happen and then go, then they go clean it. But the machine started kind of going off, like boom, um, penalty. The heart rate was much stronger. They could sense it better. The The contractions were apparent. Okay, yeah, you're, you're doing these things. They're far apart, but they were they were still happening. And so it turns out Jess had been in labor since Thursday night in some way, shape, or form. 
I don't know the specifics around that, but yeah, this is this had been starting and she was 100% spot on. And I won't go into all the other details. There's some weird stuff that happened, um, penalty. The epidural got messed up. The guy who was kind of doing it just seemed like he was on autopilot. The There was a lady next door who did not do an epidural. And it seemed like it was around the time we were talking about the epidural. And I remember her screaming, Oh my God! And I looked at Justin and I was like, You're getting an epidural. <laughs> it's, it's happening. Uh, it was so funny. Uh, the timing of it just seemed so pertinent to it. And then just a bunch of other things. The, the epidural wore off because it wasn't done very well. And she could actually feel the doctor stitching her back up because there was... It's not an episiotomy because I think that's when the doctor does it naturally. But there was a tear and she could feel it. So she could, she was feeling things toward the end that she was not expecting to feel. And I know a lot of people do natural birth. So I, I don't know the specifics around that, but I could not imagine myself pushing a baby out of any kind of orifice without literally deadening my body. Cause that just sounds absolutely awful. And the fact that she was expecting not to feel anything and then started to feel stuff also unfortunate. So the whole week was just this wild ride. And I wanted to tell the story from the end where things had kind of calmed down and Jess was actually able to relax and sleep. And she slept hard when she was in there. And I'm just sitting there holding little Liam. And he's moving his hand around and his eyes are closed and his mouth is open because they, they're all mouth breathers when they're born. It's adorable. And... I remember, so I tried to do something nice for Jess. The nurse was coming in periodically and we were trying to feed Liam. So obviously Jess has to be a part of that. And Liam, as a technically he was a month old, so he's kind of a preemie. He's a big old preemie. I think he was almost eight pounds. So like I brought up the conception date and the due date early on. It's entirely possible that they assumed a different date based off of his size and got it wrong. So it... We tell everybody he was a month early, but he was a massive one month early baby, which is not uncommon. I don't think that that's not that that that's that that is that rare, but he he might not have been a month early. This might have been on time. So we kind of go back and forth about did we get the dates wrong um, at, at the beginning anyway. That being said, he wasn't. He wasn't uh, feeding correctly. Uh, I said on um, penalty. I think that's at six now or seven. He wasn't feeding correctly. And the nurse came in and we were talking about feeding and whatever. And I was like, can you just, can you take, can you do it without us this time with the formula or whatever? I want to let her sleep. And the nurse is like, yeah, no problem. And she goes, okay. So apparently with IVs and a bunch of other things that were going on, Jess's leg swelled and she needed to get up to move a bit for it to not get really really bad um and take the um penalty the the pain meds that she was taking whatever it happened to be Tylenol or aspirin or something stronger I don't remember and I was just like no 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 I just want to let her sleep and Jess woke up like why the hell did you let me sleep she was in so much pain because of her the her her legs had swollen. They like they were massive from the the fluids and stuff that they had put in her. So I tried to do something nice and I just didn't think about it and totally, totally made probably what felt like two hours worse for her. So yeah, yeah. I made a lot of mistakes during this time, but we powered through and it was it was a wonderful day. It was a wonderful experience despite all the hiccups and we got little Liam who is now eight years old and a third grader and he is a spicy little boy so that's the story of Liam's birth without too much detail I know I went into a little bit there but I felt like it was it was pertinent for the humor of the story as well as the drama of the story but there are other things that went on and don't want to go drone on too much. Oh, one other thing. There was one other thing. There was a period where when Jess would push that his heart rate would stop. And 
what was happening was the umbilical cord was up by his head. And when he would push, he would push into the umbilical cord and it would cause the problems that it was causing. And there was a moment where they're like, we might have to do a C-section and we're kind of going back and forth on, on what that looks like having those conversations. Again, it was a part of our plan and there's something we had already talked about. So we'd had those discussions, but that was the other part. That's the moment that just started to get concerned and scared about additional problems that could be happening because she didn't understand kind of what was going on. So yeah, that was the one additional scary part, but that was more towards the end. And the doctor um, was not even there for most of it. The doctor wasn't there. The nurses did everything. They were fantastic. And the doctor came in for the final pushes and everything was great after that. Liam did not have to be in the NICU uh, for any reason. And he, other than feeding, had a pretty normal first week or so. We figured out the feeding and then he was a really good sleeper. Again, that's a normal thing for preemies, they say. So there's a possibility that he might have been. Uh, like I kind of mentioned, the, I said, ah, that's like nine penalty that he might have been preemie but also again to go back to the date we don't know the he's a, either a massive preemie or he was a tired normal newborn so anyway that's the story i wanted to share it i thought it was such a, a great idea and i'm going to do nora's eventually because there were different things that occurred with nora's and we'll uh, i think that that'll be fun i don't know that that'll be next week or not but we will we will do nora's birth eventually Thank you all for hanging out. Have a good day. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.